Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to today's Reddit quickie from the subreddit HFY called An Old Pirate's Party. Written by Regal Legal Legal, the link to the original will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Isaac looked up into the sky of his home and wondered why he was bothered coming to a parties anymore. They'd lost their thrill and fun years ago. But at the very least, it gave him a reason to venture forth from his mansion. He gazed up at the night sky from the veranda of uh, some lord's estate. He had forgotten who owned the place. While the parties might have grown old and dull to him, the night sky still had the same beauty. Orbiting a somewhat distant blue-purple gas giant known as Juarvive, that had trapped a ring of ice rocks around the moon of Totova and had a wonderful view. It was just nearing the point where the sun had set, but Juarvive still kept the sky relatively light and one could see a glimmer of the ice in orbit. But Totova wasn't just known for its beautiful sky. It was much better known for its perfect position in the system to reach many important trade routes, and being just one of dozens of moves around Jaw 5 that provided all sorts of safe havens and hidden ports for entrepreneurial ship captains. Or rather, it used to be. Isaac sighed as he thought about how things had changed. Now, there was a full-time naval presence in the area. The moons were all mapped and charted, the lanes were patrolled and guided, and the golden age of adventure was dead. And most of his old friends with it. Isaac had gotten out on top, but he couldn't help but feel that he should have gone out in a blaze of glory instead of, uh, fading away in the dull parties for dull people. As he set his hand on the hilt of his sword, he smirked at the thought that hardly anyone even brought blades to parties anymore. When was the last time he'd been at a duel over a love of a woman, or the insult of a spilled drink? When was the last time he'd even seen a duel? He shook his head slowly and kept watching the ice rings above him. Maybe he'd go home early and pass out drinking one of those bottles of old space kraken rum that he had. But before he could leave, he heard someone speak up to his side. Uh, excuse me? He turned then to look over, and then down. Before him was a couch and girl, perhaps twelve or thirteen. They made him think of a cross between a cat and a bird. They had triangular ears on top of their head, cat-like eyes, and a mostly fine coat of fur. But their tails were bright-colored plumes, like that of a bird, and he had a wing of webbing that ran under their arms. Though they couldn't fly, he'd seen them glide. His first mate for most of his illustrious career had been one. But these days, so many of them hide away their tails and wings under fancy clothes that fit better with the aristocracy of Totova. Such as one of the fancy pink dresses that probably made her look twice as big as she really was. She didn't look comfortable in it either. What can I do for you, child? He asked, and then took off his hat with a flourish as he bowed before her. Captain Isaac Dunnullaport at your service, Imperial Navy, retired. He winked at her as his eyes seemed to light up as he hadn't seen in a very long time. Aren't you, um... She fidgeted with her fingers and stammered a little. Aren't you Captain Nowhere? Ghost of the Jew of Arf? When she asked that, it grinned wide. Many of the hollow teeth glimmered in the dim light. They were considered gaudy and passe these days by most of the high class, but they'd seen all the rage in his prime. He pressed a finger on his lips and made a soft shh. Don't tell anyone. They all think I'm just some old icy void dog, but you've got a good eye on you. He grinned at her once more. Did you really lose your arm to a giant crag snapper? She asked as he chuckled as he held out his hand to let her see the synthetic fingers. Just the fingers, the bastard trying to eat my favorite navigator. Couldn't allow that now, could I? He teased. She was looking up at him with a mixture of awe and wonder that he hadn't seen in... Uh, how long had it been? He looked at her and then out over Lord What's-His-Face personal garden over the back of his estate and waved over to it. I once jeweled Baron Ventinia over there, you know, back when he owned this place. Just before you cut out his eye and stole his wife, she finished for him, which made him chuckle. She wasn't his wife, and since no one belongs to anyone but themselves, I didn't steal her from anyone, he corrected. Which is why you destroyed the Royal Bank's debt holder office in Parasol, and then slipped between the rings to make your escape when they called the whole fleet after you. 
She just rattled off some of his past work that he could only chuckle and grin once more. Allegedly, my dear, allegedly. After all, what pirate would destroy so much money rather than steal it for himself, he asked. But, but because everyone can be from nowhere. Everyone can start life new. All they need to do is join your crew. He smirked as she used his old slogan to get more crew members when he was in port. You were born a bastard and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. She realized what she'd said and he just laughed. No, no, quite right. A born bastard and a living bastard according to my enemies, he teased. I was cast out by my father and then dedicated your life to bringing him down and claiming his noble title as your own, culminating in the infamous raid on Governor's Palace, where you killed your evil brother and father and stole the title for yourself shortly before the equally famous Twilight invasion of the Imperial Navy, which many claimed that you planned and guided. All the other captains were involved. Captain Dreadbolt, Bloodblade Robert, Ironhide Averick, Madame LaRue. Since she began to list off some of his old friends, his smile slowly faded. How many of them had he lost? He negotiated a deal with the Imperials, trading treasure for title and gotten out of the game. But the others... Well, most of them hadn't made it to the same sort of plans. They didn't understand how different it would be when the Imperials invaded. Then the system was filled with standing navies, and the increase of importance to various nations involved. Men pirates were getting pushed out. Used to be that lone merchantmen fat with treasure from the Azronian Crusades, or even gold and silver from the mines of Plantanova. They were now coming in convoys, then armed convoys, then they didn't need to stop to refuel or discharge around the gas giants as much. And all the safe routes through the moons were chartered. The treasure fleet stopped the gold and the silver started being processed locally. And now the shipments were more about grain and ore than anything else that a pirate could use easily. For a brief wonderful period Isaac had been the right person in the right place doing what only he could achieve. And now it was over never to return. Captain Nowhere, he returned to reality as she spoke and focused on her once more. She looked up at him with a worried expression. How long had he been standing there silent? My best friend for decades was a couchon, you know. He said as he tried to figure out what to say to the girl. Rainbow Rick, he... I think he was my great uncle, but uh, my family doesn't really want me asking about that sort of thing. They say it's not polite anymore. He laughed, and she mentioned that and gave her a more focused look. It is true that Baron Ventenia hid jeweled flowers around his garden for both lovers and victims of his. She asked, and Isaac smiled once more. Now there was a son of a bitch with a sense of style. He insisted his ship and his incredibly intricate gold rose etched into the bow. I stole it. Twice, but yes, I'm sure there is still a few of those flowers out there. He waved at the garden and the hedge maze in the distance. Want to go find one, he asked. She brightened up for a moment and then looked suddenly worried. Her ears twitched about as she looked to the either side and wrung her hands. I'm, I'm not supposed to leave the veranda. It'll ruin my dress. It's very expensive. She said and Isaac looked around for a moment before picking up his rum and tunic juice before splashing the drink over the front of her dress. The green juice stained the pink fabric immediately as she gasped out. There, dress ruined. Now let's go have an adventure. He grinned at her and after a moment she nodded and turned around. Could you please grab the big string and pull? She asked, pointing to the knot that held the dress in place. He arched a brow but reached out and tugged. As if it came free, she tucked her arms into the dress, letting it fall to the ground, as she revealed beneath it a smaller spacer suit like so many pirates wore in his day. He laughed at the sight of a young girl wearing an old, oil-stained, greasy outfit like that, but he noticed the bright rainbow plumage of her tail, and as she stretched out her arms, he could see that she'd modified the sides of the suit to allow her wings room. Her feathers shimmered in the light, making an unmistakably familiar pattern to him. You've just got to be related to Rick, he muttered, and when she turned, she smiled up at him and saluted. Sophia Naljipa Rochella, reporting for duty, Captain. She took a moment to salute back. Welcome aboard, Rainbow Rochella. Let's find some treasure. He turned and jumped over the edge of the veranda, then waiting for her to quickly hop over and follow him as he rushed towards the garden in the distance, feeding an energy that he hadn't experienced in years, possibly decades. As they got near the maze, he stopped short. 
Hold on first, mate. I hear that there is dangerous animals in these parts that'll tear you apart if you're not careful. He looked around and then pointed as he finally saw who he was looking for. There! He whistled out and watched the golden brown dog looked up. From his place in a fancy doghouse, Isaac couldn't remember the name of the lord that owned this place. How did he remember the dog? Look out, it's a vicious beast approaches. Chance came running over then, excited at the sudden company. He jumped around for a bit but didn't try to climb on either of them, though he did lean up to lick the girl's face. Captain, the beast has a taste for my flesh, what do we do? She gasped out as Isaac quickly picked up a stick. Never fear, first mate, we'll draw it away. With this, the bane of terrible beasts everywhere. He wagged the stick in the air for a moment to get the dog's attention, and then he tossed it out into the garden. As chance went running, Isaac winked at Rochella. Now, let's hide, it'll confuse him something terrible. She was laughing as they dashed into the maze then. Soon, they'd found one of the old jeweled flowers, and he'd broken it off of the base to give it to her. They played around with the dangerous guard beast for a bit and then headed around to the estate to the kitchen. It was time for him to show her a small taste of piracy. The servants inside jumped as Isaac kicked the door open and stepped in waving his electrostabler around in one hand and his plasma pistol in the other. Yar, I am Captain Nowhere and we're here for the loot. Yeah, we're here for the ice cream. The new first mate called out as she waved a stick at them. As they stormed the kitchen, Isaac made sure to press the golden bitcoin into the hand of each of the servants as he passed, waving his sword and shouting a bit, but not doing more than that, as his partner in crime grabbed several cartons of ice cream from the freezer. As they retreated from the ill-gotten gains, he snagged a bottle of rum as well, and then bowed before the surprised and shocked staff. Don't forget your run in with the nefarious Captain Nowhere. Best be off with your lives and thanking whatever ye believe in. Have I left ye in one piece? He bellowed with a laugh, but then left a pouch of more golden bitcoins in the hand of one of the nearest waiter. Spread them around, t'was all in good fun. He then joined his newfound crew outside on the bench in the garden. She had opened all of the cartons and seemed to have tried them all once or twice, and possibly had stuck her face into one of them based on how much she was smeared around her muzzle. He chuckled at the sight and pulled the top of the bottle of rum into his teeth and took a swig. Can I have some? she asked, pointing at his bottle. He looked at it for a moment and then grinned, his hollow teeth once more gleaming in the dark. Sure, but it's a mite bit strong, he cautioned, but she took it in both hands and slowly tilted it up. He doubted that she got more than a taste of it before she pulled it away. Coughing and spluttering, he laughed and patted her on the back with one hand, taking the bottle back with the other. It's good, she whispered unconvincingly as she coughed and blinked away the tears. Ah, that it is, he smiled, and then he took up one of the spoons that she'd stolen to get a scoop of ice cream for himself. Ah, chocolate and cinnamon with a hint of orange. One of my favorites. Used to be a time when I was damned hard to get any of those things. I remember stabbing a man for my very first banana. I want to be like you when I grow up. I want to be a pirate, Rochella said, but then Isaac frowned as he shook his head. No, you don't. You might want to be like me in a way, but not a pirate. Those days are over, and even when those days were still around, it wasn't the life that you think it was. See all my teeth. He waved a hand of his hollow smile. There weren't any dentist pirates. The old void rations were so hard we'd chip our teeth on them. All of them might get rotten out by the ivory worms. Do you have any idea what it's like to feel a worm wiggling around in your gums? He asked and saw her disgust expression. It's not pleasant. Well, but I mean, what about all the adventure? She asked. It was dangerous. You know why? I made sure to make people love me. Why I spent so much time killing tax collectors and destroying dead holders? Because I needed to keep recruiting new, desperate idiots. I had hundreds of crew die under my command. Boarding ships raiding ports. Deadly work. To say nothing for pirate hunters. He shook his head at some old memories and ran his hand along his right knee as it twinged from some old wound. Well, you didn't have anyone telling you what to do, she insisted as he laughed. I did before I was a captain. I worked my way up, you know, scrubbing decks, painting the hall, cleaning the weapons. Then I was firing the weapons and terrified every second of every battle. I obeyed orders until one day our captain died, and for some reason, 
everyone looked to me. It was more terrifying than any battle. All these people who elected me as the captain. Like I had all the answers. How did that happen? And that freedom that you likely think about. It comes with having no family, no connections. I'm guessing you don't like being told to wear stuffy dresses and come to boring parties. I hate them, she agreed with a nod. Well, it's likely because your parents love you and think it's in your best interest. I have no idea what your parents are like, but let me tell you this. Cherish their love, hug them often, spend time with them. Do what you have to for now, but turn your situation to your advantage. Don't try to rebel and run off. That will make them try to cling tighter. Make deals, see if they can teach you how to sail, or take you to the museums where you can learn. The age of piracy is dead. He sighed and shook his head, as are most of my oldest, dearest friends. Let an old pirate give you some advice. Try to make your excitement legally. You like adventure and exploration, right? Well, do you know how many old ruins dot these moons? How many wrecks need to be explored around the system? He waved his hand at the sky. Lots, she asked. Lots, he agreed. Get educated. Explore the old ruins in the name of preserving history. Start your own museum. Make your own path to adventure. Figure out your strengths because you are strong. Strong in a way so few people are. You might not have the raw strength like Ironhide or the speed of Captain Dreadbolt, but I'm sure that you've got something. But don't hate the people around you who trade safety for comfort for excitement and adventure. Some people just aren't as brave as you and I. He winked and ruffled her hair. I just don't like being told what to do all the time. They never let me just go run around and have fun, she insisted. Guess what? You're a child, it's going to happen. Learn to live with it for now. Bide your time. Like I said, make deals with them. Be smart about it. Use the opportunity given to you by being born in a nice family that can attend boring yet fancy parties like this. Because let me tell you, being born a bastard is not nearly as fun as the stories and legends make it out to sound. Still have your flower, he asked as she nodded, pulling a small silver white gold flower from her pocket. Isaac had no idea if it was supposed to symbolize one of those old baron's victims or lovers, but it really didn't matter. Should I put it back? She asked and he shook his head. Keep it. Proof that if only for a night that you were part of Captain Noe's crew. He stood up and then set the bottle of rum back down on the bench. Now come on, let's see if they started sending out search parties for you. She sighed and set down her carton of ice cream, and she got up to follow him back to the veranda of the estate. As they got close, they could see a crowd assembled at the center of the veranda, as he called out as he approached. Looking for this one? There you are. We were worried sick. You ruined your dress, and what's all this? A concerned Kokian woman dashed forward and had already pulled cloth from, well, he wasn't sure where she kept it in her dress, but she was using it to clean the ice cream smudges from the girl's mouth. You're in big trouble, young lady. I know, Richelle accepted with a sigh. Now, now, it wasn't her idea. It was all mine. I take the blame. I accidentally spilled my drink on her dress and thought it would be fun to show her the old garden. Don't be too hard on her. Isaac insisted, but he watched a man particularly fancy set of clothes push his way through the crowd. Captain Denalaport, this behavior is unacceptable. I kept you on the guest list all these years out of respect for your position in the society's history. But this is too much. Isaac rolled his eyes as he looked at the clean-shaven lord before him. His hair perfectly manicured, his hands soft and untested, his clothes not even ruffled. Now, now, I'm here to apologize. We had a bit of fun as all. No one got hurt, he insisted. That changes nothing. I'm not sure I'll ever let you onto my estate again. When the Lord said that, he just smirked, and in a flash the crowd backed up with a gasp. His electroblade extended out the point, pressed against the Lord's throat. His eyes wide in fear, as you could see a soft hum of the blade, as Isaac rubbed his thumb on the button as it charged it. Kid, you don't let me do anything. I do what I feel like. I've likely killed more men than you've ever met in your life. Are you strong? He asked then, and the Lord frowned, looking confused. Am I strong? Isaac repeated. Do you have any idea if you're strong? I... I don't know how much I can lift, the Lord stammered out. Not physically. With those little twigs that you call arms, I can see that you're not some muscular giant. But it doesn't matter because if someone asks you if you're strong, and you don't immediately reply yes, then the answer is no. You're not, because you've never had any reason to find out. You've never tested yourself. 
Well, I have, and this little one here, a fraction of your age, and she already knows that she's strong. He waved at Rochella. Civilization is a gilded cage, a gilded cage where most of us agree to live. But you forget, the door to the cage isn't locked. It's just difficult to open and close. But some of us are strong enough to open it and close it, to come and go as we please, because it's nice to in this gilded cage, isn't it? It's safe and comfortable and luxurious. But do you know what? His question hung in the air for a few seconds before the crowd of worried aristocracy. What? The Lord finally asked. The cage will only be shaped by the people with the strength to bend the bars, and most of the time the people who want to leave that cage. They don't hate the bars, they don't hate the safety, they hate the people who share it with it. He pulled his blade away from the Lord gasp, rubbing his throat and Isaac sheathed his sword. But he pulled out his trusty electro dagger from his boot and handed it to the cockoon that he figured was Rochella's mother. Her strength isn't being a permanent proper wife for some lord. Help her find her strength and you'll help her find her happiness. With that, he rubbed the tip of the white beard and then he removed his hat with a flourish, bowing before them all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go get drunk and find out if Madame LaRue is still alive. I'd almost forgotten that being a true pirate is only partly about looting. It's also about doing what I damn well please. So, to hell with his boring parties anyway. As he walked away from the stunned crowd, he grabbed the waiter by the arm. Tell the servants, maids, waiters, cooks, shallots, valets, butlers, and people like that, I'm having a party at my estate. My treat, and we're going to drink until none of us can walk. Is that busty wench really Miss Scarlet? I haven't seen you since the night in Baron Ventimir's bathhouse. He let go of the waiter before grabbing a nearby white-haired housekeeper, close as he tilted her back and kissed her, before spinning her around as if in dancing with her. He kissed her hand once more and was back on her feet and winked. Never looked better, my dear. He left her to blush and straighten out her uniform as he headed to the door. No one daring to stop him. Damn, it's good to be a pirate. And that, my friends, is the end of this Reddit quickie. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel or the author, all the stuff is down below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next story. Cheers.